Hi, welcome to Enchiridion. This is way past Halloween, but here it is. What you've been waiting for, a special treat. This is going to be a long one, so sit back and enjoy this Halloween special, Cryptid Case, Jersey Devil. There are multiple versions of the origins of what has come to be known as the Jersey Devil. So, which are the stories behind this cryptid? How have sightings evolved throughout the years? And is there any truth or aspects of scientific interest to the story? One of the most popular is that either a Mrs. Leeds or a Mrs. Shroud of Leeds Point, New Jersey, discovered she was pregnant and because she already had a lot of children, some say a dozen, carelessly commented, I just as soon have a devil in the house as another child. Her comment came back to haunt her, because when she gave birth, the thing had cloven hooves, horns, and yellow, demonic eyes. Its demonic aura filled the room. Within a few minutes after birth, it had grown to the size of a boy, and in a puff of smoke suddenly whooshed up the chimney, leaving a strong smell of brimstone in its wake. In another version of the legend, one stormy night, either Mrs. Leeds or Mrs. Shrouds, gave birth to a horribly deformed and misshapen baby, which she attempted to hide from neighbors by keeping it locked in the shed room where firewood was kept. He was allowed outside the room only after dark, and one night as thunder crackled and lightning streaked across the skies, the abomination was capering about the house when it suddenly and without warning flapped its leathery wings and disappeared up the chimney. The third version of this story has a young girl falling in love with a British soldier during the Revolutionary War. Local folk condemned her, and some even warned that a child sired by an enemy soldier would surely be a devil. When she gave birth, sure enough, the infant had hooves, horns, and wings, and even her own family agreed she was being punished for a treachery. The family told everyone the monstrously deformed offspring had died at birth, and kept the fruit of their daughter's shame locked in the woodshed for multiple years until one night when the moon was at its fullest, it escaped into the Pine Barrens. But whichever the origins of the Jersey Devil, the legend grew and spread like wildfire, and occasionally someone encountered the supposed demon. One of the most notable sightings of all occurred in the early 19th century when a revolutionary naval hero, Commodore Stephen Decatur, was present during the testing of cannonballs when a bizarre creature flew across the field. As the story goes, either he or one of the other men present fired a cannon toward the winged monster, and the ball went right through the thing, leaving a round hole. The Jersey Devil, however, unfazed by the iron projectile, didn't alter its pace and continued flying leisurely towards the woods. Another sighting by a famous person occurred sometime between 1816 and 1839, when Joseph Bonaparte, also known as Comte de Cerbiliers, brother of Napoleon and former king of Spain, went into exile in the United States after abdicating his throne. Around 1817, he purchased property in Bordentown, New Jersey. His estate, Point Breeze, consisted of 1,800 acres bordering the Crosswood Creek. Bonaparte loved to hunt, and one snowy afternoon discovered strange tracks in the woods that he later mentioned looked like the footprints of a two-footed donkey with one foot slightly bigger than the other. He followed the imprint until they suddenly ended as though the creature had suddenly taken flight. As he stared in wonderment, he heard what he later described as a hissing noise behind him, and turning, came face to face with a huge, winged animal with a horse-like head and bird-like legs. Bonaparte was too unnerved to shoot, and after staring for a minute, the strange beast hissed at him again, flapped its wings and flew away. The following day, he repeated the story and was told he had encountered the infamous Jersey Devil. Subsequently, Bonaparte looked for the animal or its tracks every time he went hunting, but never encountered a mysterious and elusive creature again. During the years 1840 and 1841, farmers complained of losing chickens, sheep, and goats, and reported finding mysterious tracks among the animal parts left behind. Some insisted that on nights the attacks occurred, they heard the piercing scream of some unknown animal stalking the forest. The cry, they insisted, sounded something like that of a panther or a woman in distress. Reports and sightings of the Jersey Devil continued, and W.F. Meyer included the tale of the mysterious creature in his article In the Pines that appeared 
in the May 1859 issue of the Atlantic Monthly, in which he wrote that many local people were so afraid of the beast that most avoided going out after dark, if at all possible. Throughout the remainder of the 19th century, there were numerous reports of the devil snatching livestock in and around Bridgeton, Brigantine, Haddonfield, Long Branch, Leeds Point, and Smithville. There were those who swore the monster would carry off anything that moved. The last recorded sighting of the beast before 1900 was by George Saurasi, a prominent businessman who lived near the New York border. Sporadic sightings continued, but slowly died down, and by 1903, Charles Skinner, author of American Myths and Legends, declared the legend of the Jersey Devil had run its course and no more would be heard of the Pine Barrens abomination. Indeed, it appeared the devil had faded into obscurity, nothing more than a bogeyman from times past to frighten naughty children. Little was heard of the devil in the ensuing six years in the few sightings, including a 1905 report by a keeper at the Afsakon Lighthouse that mentioned that he saw the winged monster atop the tower were shocked the October act of imagination. Then, on the night of Saturday, January 16, 1909, Thad Cosin saw a creature with glowing eyes flying down a street in Woodbury, New Jersey. He gave a statement attesting he heard a hissing and something white flew across the street. I saw two spots of phosphorus, the eyes of the beast. There was a white cloud like escaping steam from an engine. It moved as fast as an auto. Eleven miles away in Gloucester City, James Feldon discovered strange, unidentifiable footprints in a different yard, with a trail leading to a yunk yard. A Mrs. Schindel also saw footprints, or perhaps the creature itself, for she declared, It's a two-legged cow with wings. Around 2 a.m. Sunday morning of January 17, almost 40 miles northeast of Gloucester City, John McCone of Bristol, Pennsylvania, was awakened by what he said sounded like the screams of a baby, and other strange noises that sounded like the scratching of a phonograph before the music begins, and yet it also had something of a whistle to it. You know how the factory whistle sounds? Well, it was something like that, he mentioned. Around the same time, James Sackbill, a police officer, had an odd feeling as he listened to dogs barking and growling in multiple yards. When he turned around, he was astonished to find that there in the shadows stood the Jersey Devil, a winged creature hopping around. The features he observed were quite rare because he hadn't seen anything like it before, and it had a horrible scream. He pulled his pistol and fired as he ran toward the creature, or so he said, which took flight and disappeared into the darkness. A third sighting in Bristol was reported by Postmaster E.W. Minster, who reported, I awoke about 2 o'clock in the morning, and finding myself unable to sleep, I arose and wet my head with cold water as a cure for insomnia. As I got up, I heard an eerie, almost supernatural sound from the direction of the river. I looked out upon the Delaware and saw flying diagonally across what appeared to be a large crane, but which was emitting a glow like a firefly. Its head resembled that of a ram, with curled horns, and its long, thick neck was thrust forward in flight. It had long, thin wings and short legs, the front legs shorter than the hind. Again, it uttered its mournful and awful call, a combination of a squawk and a whistle, the beginning very high and piercing, and ending very hoarse and low. Several other Bristol residents found their yards covered in mysterious hoof prints when they went outside Sunday morning. The following day, the Joseph Lawton family of Burlington, New Jersey, no more than one and a half miles from Bristol, but on the other side of the Delaware River, discovered the strange prints of a hoofed animal in their yard and something had eaten some of the table scraps in their trash. They claimed the beast circled the house and at one point attempted to open the back door. Others in Burlington also found similar footprints that stopped and started again, as though the creature had run up the trunks of trees and flown from rooftop to rooftop. The prints were also reported by residents in Columbus, Heading, Kenora, and Rancoas, all within an approximate 5 mile radius of Burlington. In some locations, men with tracking hounds attempted to track the beast, but the dogs either couldn't or wouldn't follow the trail. By Tuesday, January 19, the Jersey Devil was back in Gloucester City, where it awakened Mr. and Mrs. Nelson Abens around 2.30 a.m. After hearing mysterious, eerie noises, the pair looked out of their bedroom window and observed the winged monster standing on the roof of an outbuilding. 
The creature remained stationary for what they believed was approximately 10 minutes, allowing them sufficient time to get a good look at it. Later, Nelson Evans mentioned it was about three and a half feet high, with a head like a collie dog and a face like a horse. It had a long neck, wings about two feet long, and its back legs were like those of a crane, and it had horses' hooves. It walked on its back legs and held up two short front legs with paws on them. It didn't use the front legs at all while we were watching. My wife and I were scared, I tell you, but I managed to open the window and say, shoo, and it turned around, barked at me, and flew away. That afternoon, two professional hunters, familiar with the footprints of every animal in the region, insisted they had never before seen anything like those of the winged beast. Nonetheless, they tracked the creature for miles, and later reported the animal, if it was an animal, jumped five-foot fences and squeezed under or through tiny spaces of no more than eight inches. One of the men was so unnerved by the experience that he swore that he would never leave home again without his gun. In Camden, a young girl fainted when she came upon the devil's tracks, and her identification of the prince, like those of several others, was that one was larger than the other, as if the creature had a deformed foot. There was also an actual sighting in Camden by a witness who claimed the animal looked something like a possum, the size of a dog, with a shrill bark, flapping its wings and taking off into the air. The same day, a witness in Swedesboro insisted the creature had horns or antlers, and in Glassboro, a witness observed the tracks had three toes and appeared to be dog-like. On Wednesday, the Reverend John Purcell of Pemberton and a Burlington police officer both saw the devil. A posse organized in Haddonfield found tracks that ended abruptly, and another posse in Collingswood watched helplessly as the mysterious animal flew off towards Moorestown. During its flight, the monster was observed by John Smith of Maple Shade flying over Mount Carmel Cemetery. Immediately thereafter, George Snyder spied the beast and his description and that of Smith tallied, with both men agreeing it was three feet high, with long black hair over its entire body, arms and hands like a monkey, face like a dog, split hooves and a tail a foot long. In the riverside, people reported finding hoof prints on rooftops, and near a dead puppy the animal had apparently killed. A trolley car operator in Springside glimpsed something he said looked like a winged kangaroo with a long neck, cross the tracks and disappear into the shadows. By Thursday, January 21, the creature had returned to Camden. At approximately 1 a.m., a member of the Black Hawk Social Club heard a noise at the back window and when he turned, came face to face with the Jersey Devil, staring at him through the glass. As terrified members looked on, he attempted to scare the thing away and the beast finally flew off. All who heard its screams described them as blood curling. Around 2 o'clock, Trolley passengers in Haddon Heights were shocked to see the mysterious winged animal flying about nearby. When the trolley stopped, witnesses watched in horror as the creature circled above making hissing cries as it flew away. In his report, Louis Boger wrote, In general appearance, it resembled a kangaroo. It has a long neck, and from what glimpse I got of its head, its features are hideous. It has wings of a fairly good size, and of course in the darkness look black. Its legs are long and somewhat slender, and were held in just such a position as a swan when it is flying. We all tried to get a look at its feet, to see what shape they were, but the darkness was too great. It looked to be about 4 feet high. At this point, you might notice that generally the creature is described as relatively small, from 3 to 5 feet high. Just 4 hours later, a woman in Burlington, 50 miles north of Haddon Heights, heard a noise in an alley near her home looked out the window and saw a creature she described as having bird-like features and the head of a horse. When it appeared the thing was about to leap at her, she quickly slammed the window shut and collapsed from sheer fright. In her account, she said, For some minutes I was so frightened I was unable to scream. My husband and son had already gone to work, and I was finally able to awaken my youngest son, who was asleep upstairs. Though no one else saw the demon, footprints were discovered in the alley, and there was a rumor making the rounds in Burlington that the Major had ordered police to shoot the devil on sight. Additionally, on Thursday, William Cromley of Trenton pulled up to his home and, according to the report, when he exited his buggy, 
saw a sight that froze the blood in his veins and caused his hair to stand upright. He described the creature as a beast of fur and feathers, about the size of an average dog, with the face of a German shepherd, from which flowered large sparkling eyes. As he watched, the creature flapped its wings and flew away. Also in Trenton, City Councilman E.P. Whedon was awakened by what he thought was someone attempting to break into his house. He hurried to the window of his second floor bedroom, where he heard flapping wings, and when he looked out, observed hoof prints in the snow on the roof over the porch. The same footprints were observed in other parts of Trenton, including at the nearby arsenal. In both Trenton and New Brunswick, armed guards were assigned to streetcars in case of an attack by the Jersey Devil. In Pittman, Bridgeton, and Millville, farmers reported large numbers of missing chickens. Some said they heard loud, screeching cries in the night, and others claimed that dead chickens didn't appear to have a mark on them. Everyone agreed this was the work of the demon of the Pine Barrens. In Roebling, there were so many tracks covering some yards that it appeared an entire legion of devils had gathered in the night for a romp around town. The beast was sighted by a man walking along the highway in Leeperville, Pennsylvania, and he insisted the thing had skin like an alligator, stood on its hind feet, and was about six feet tall, and ran faster than passing cars. William Cronk spotted a creature with a horse-like head, long hind legs with claws and big wings, flying across his yard. He too said the animal walked upright like a human, and there were tracks all over the place. Approximately 8 miles away as the crowd flies, two women in Westville, New Jersey were attending a meeting when they happened to look out the window where they saw a strange creature sitting in the snow in the front yard. Shortly after that, a group of men formed a search party to find and destroy the beast. Around 5 miles away in West Collingswood, two men walking along the road saw what they initially believed to be an ostrich sitting atop a house. They notified the fire departments, and firemen used their hose to shoot a hefty stream of water at the creature, knocking it off the roof. It was thought that the beast would flee, but it suddenly turned and charged onlookers. The crowd began throwing anything they could get their hands on at the abomination, but the thing paid no attention to that and continued to advance. Instead of attacking, it spread its wings and vanished mysteriously into the night sky. Mrs. Mary Sorbinski of Camden was the first to witness an actual attack by the Jersey Devil. Around 7 p.m., she heard the dog barking at something in the backyard and opened the door to see the animal in the vice-like grip of what she described as a horrible monster. She began hitting the creature with a broomstick, causing it to drop the whimpering canine. It then began shrieking and flew it at her, but suddenly changed directions and disappeared in the darkness. Once she was certain the beast was gone, she discovered the dog was missing a big chunk of flesh. She told neighbors and within the hour, police arrived. Curious neighbors crowded the yard and everyone present heard piercing screams of the creature. Police officers fired at the beast and it eventually flew off. This particular incident frightened people all over New Jersey, causing a statewide panic. In the meantime, across the Delaware and Philadelphia, Mrs. J.E. White, reported an encounter with the devil while hanging out laundry around 4 p.m. She noticed something in the corner of the yard, and as she approached, an animal with scaly skin rose to a height of approximately 6 feet and spurted flames from its mouth. Mrs. White screamed. Her husband came running, and by the time he got to his wife, she had fainted. Nonetheless, he caught a glimpse of the creature, and when he attempted to hit it with a pole, it swiftly took wing. Immediately thereafter, a driver almost hit a weird creature as it scampered across the road. William Becker claimed he had thrown stones at a beast and another witness insisted he had seen the Jersey Devil sitting beside the road. A man by the name of R. L. Campbell reported that a man told him the creature's tail touched an electric railway, producing a power surge and a great explosion that melted the tracks for 20 feet in both directions, but no remains of the animal were discovered. A telegraph lineman filed a similar report in which he contended, In an isolated spot in the Jersey Pines, about five miles from Pleasantville, at a place known as Beaver Pond, one of the linemen, Howard Campbell, was detailed on a piece of work a little distance from the rest of the men on duty. After walking a little way into the woods, his attention was attracted by something coming down the path toward him. 
He became so frightened by the unusual appearance of the thing that he straight away made for the nearest telegraph pole, letting out several yells for help, and losing his wits entirely by the time he reached the top of the pole. Cadbell threw himself out of the mass of the wires between the two poles and was lying there helpless by the time the rest of the gang, including myself, had arrived. Seeing the terror on the pole, I raised my gun and fired. One shot broke a wing and it fell to the ground, uttering hideous screams, but before anyone could collect his wits, the thing was up and off with long strides and a sort of hop, dragging one wing and then disappearing into the pine thicket. We got ropes and helped Catbell down from his precarious position. As nearly as I can describe the terror, it had the head of a horse, the wings of a bat, and a tail like a rat's, only longer. If this shooting incident occurred January 21, the Jersey Devil made a miraculously quick recovery for the following day, Friday, January 22. The beast was back in Camden, where a family was awakened around 2 a.m. by footsteps on their roof. Two hours later, Louis Schreur, a police officer, observed the mysterious creature, which he described as having the head and body of a kangaroo, antlers like a deer, and bat wings, drinking from a horse throw. Parents in Mount Ephraim wouldn't allow their children to go to school in factories, mills and offices in Haynesport and Gloucester were closed because no one appeared for work. Citizens throughout the state were afraid to leave their homes, even in daylight. In Blackwood, a police officer by the name of Merchant made a sketch of the beast he saw and it matched the descriptions others had provided earlier in the week. In Salem, Jacob Henderson saw the devil, which he described as having a tail and wings, but when his bulldog barked and growled at the beast, it ran into the woods. There were also reports of sightings in Trenton and Woodbury. Two girls in Chester, Pennsylvania reportedly saw the demon flying out of an open boxcar of a stationary freight train and into the sky. In nearby Morristown, a man claimed he had captured the creature in his barn, but when authorities arrived, the winged animal was nowhere to be found. There were no reported devil sightings Saturday, January 23, nor the following day, nor the day after that. The creature, or whatever it was, had vanished as suddenly as it had appeared the previous Sunday when Thad Cosin saw the glowing-eyed monster flying along a Woodbury street. The next sighting of the Jersey Devil, and the final one recorded for 1909, occurred February 24 when a farmer in Salem County claimed to have seen a strange bird-like creature with human feet. The unidentified creature that had plagued New Jersey and parts of Pennsylvania in 1909 had seemingly disappeared for good and was soon relegated to folklore. In 1918, there was a single devil encounter and only a handful of reports during the 1920s. Then in 1927, a taxi driver changing a flat was terrified when a hairy creature landed atop his vehicle, stood upright like a man, and caused the car to shake violently. There were less than half a dozen sightings in the 1930s, one of which occurred in August 1930 when berry pickers at Leeds Point and Mays Landing reported seeing the devil eating blueberries and cranberries. A similar encounter occurred two weeks later. In 1932, there was a single report in Downingtown, Pennsylvania, and another New Jersey report in 1935. The beast managed to avoid detection until 1936, when multiple people in Woodstown heard peculiar, piercing cries emanating from the woods which they attributed to the demon of the Pine Barrens. The following year, the July 28, 1937 issue of the Evening Bulletin reported that witnesses in Downingtown had seen what they described as a kangaroo-like creature and a posse gathered to hunt down the beast. Devil sightings were scarce in the 1940s, but shortly after the end of World War II, a panic broke out at Fort Dix, south of Trenton, when someone or something slashed tents and committed other acts of vandalism, and one night a guard chased a white thing into the woods. Many scoffed when someone mentioned the Jersey Devil, but those who remembered the visitation of 1909 were not among them. In November 1951, a group of youngsters were allegedly cornered by the Jersey Devil at the Dewport Clubhouse in Gibbstown. Dozens of people saw the beast, but it pounded away without harming anyone. Additionally, in 1951, a posse in Gibbsboro, 30 miles west of Gibbstown, stalked a creature that some described as a bloody-faced devil, while others contended they were chasing a 7-foot-tall hairy man. 
Two years later, in 1953, Philip Smith, known to be a sober and honest man, observed a strange creature walking along the street. In 1957, employees of the New Jersey Department of Conservation discovered the bones, feathers, and hind legs of an unknown animal in the Pine Barrens. In 1959, several boys in Wall Township were caught hunting in the woods and fined, even though they claimed to have been hot on the trail of the Jersey Devil. During the summer of 1959 in Bridgeton, two young sisters saw a monster staring at them through their bedroom window. In 1961, two couples driving through the Pine Barrens insisted the Jersey Devil landed on top of their car. Terrified and fearing the creature would crush the vehicle with them inside, the four got out and ran into the woods. It wasn't until they heard a shrill scream and saw the beast flying away that they returned to their vehicle, the top of which was badly dented. Five men hunting near Lake Atian, in the proximity of Batso, in 1963 discovered strange tracks that measured 11 inches in length and heard loud, shrill cries. The men were all experienced hunters, but none could identify the odd footprints or the blood curling shrieks. A year later, in 1964, strange screeching sounds were reported at Estill Manor. In April of 1966, mutilated dogs and livestock were discovered near the Mullica River. In one such incident, more than 40 animals, 31 ducks, 3 geese, 4 cats, and 2 dogs were badly mangled and killed in a manner such as the owner had never seen before. One of the animals was a 90-pound German Shepherd that had his throat ripped out. The authorities discovered giant footprints in the area where the animals were killed. Unfortunately, the ground was too wet to follow the monster to its lair or create plaster casts. On September 9, 1966, a couple witnessed a glowing creature, which they described as horse-like, in Edison. This particular sighting was supposedly thoroughly investigated. There were no devil sightings of note for two years. Then, in 1969, a gentleman driving in Sweetwater saw the Jersey Devil cross the road in front of his car. The Jersey Devil became much more active in the 70s, with the first report coming from Mercer County, where the beast pulled the child's hair. The following years, in 1971, farmers in Leeds Point blamed a demon for killing their chickens. Four or five couples were partying in Manahawken. One summer night in 1973, and around 11 o'clock, they all saw a creature fly out of the brush. They described it as a big, black animal, almost the size of a large buck, with huge black wings and red eyes. When the beast swept its wings downward, there was such a strong swoosh that food, drinks, and other items were blown off the hoods of their cars. We actually heard the wing brush the windshield of the one car, a member of the group said later. Needless to say, we all tumbled into the cars and went back to a better lit area. But even the next day, when we all sobered up, we all could describe the same thing, right down to the red eyes. In 1974, an ambulance driver heard cries emanating from the Pine Barrens, and a car full of people saw a mysterious beast cross their path near Batsdo in Warden State Forest. Also in 1974, people canoeing in Setter Creek observed something watching them from the bank. A horse in Williamstown was discovered with its throat completely torn out in 1975, and neighbors immediately blamed the Jersey Devil. The same year, several children reported an encounter with a demon, and in October, a Somerset man witnessed a strange creature flying toward him before alighting nearby. In 1976, an attendant at a Jackson Mills service station insisted that the Jersey Devil was constantly following him home at night. On the other side of the state in Pedricktown, there were several reports of dead pigs and farmers said some of them were literally ripped to pieces. A woman near a lake in Batstos and a man in Long Branch claimed they had been hissed and screamed at by a strange beast. The year 1977 was another busy one for the Jersey Devil. In January, there was a report from Chatsworth, and that summer, a woman in the Pine Barrens observed the creature eating blueberries. A terrifying monster grabbed the door handle of a woman's car in Pence Grove, and though she reached a speed of 60 miles per hour in an attempt to force the thing to let it go, it was able to run or fly effortlessly beside her, still clutching the handle. The devil also tormented campers in Tuckerton, where the noisy fiend dented trailers and left hoofprints in various camping spots. One of the more interesting encounters of 1977 was that of a woman in Vincentown, 
who was watching television when she heard something outside. Believing it was her horse, she looked out and saw a creature standing on two legs, shaped like a deer's legs, with massive wings, which it spread and brought down with what she described as a loud slap. Believing she was hallucinating, she lay down and soon heard something walking about in her front yard accompanied by loud hissing growls, which she likened to the sounds dragons made in the movies. She described the animal as furry with a horse or goat shaped head and horns that went back like a goat's. In 1978, a group of Shatsworth teenagers encountered the Pine Barrens demon, which they said had red eyes and a bad smell. In June, two campers in Atian contacted park rangers, claiming the screams of the Jersey Devil had kept them awake all night. Similar howls and screams were heard later on that year in Smithville and Chestnut Neck. A boy in Jersey City was awakened by a screaming beast scratching at his window. He cried out and jumped back into bed, but by the time his father got to his room, the creature was gone. Also in 1978, two camp counselors locked themselves in the laundry building at a Blairstown YMCA camp after hearing horrific, unidentifiable howls coming from the woods. In 1979, a couple in Tabernacle Township claimed they were hearing horrible cries but what they assumed was the Jersey Devil from the forest behind their home. The creature was also spotted on the Stockton State College campus in Pomona, after which a group of students attempted to track the elusive beast. A couple reported seeing the Jersey Devil at Asion Lake in 1981. In 1987, the creature killed a German Shepherd in Vineland and unidentifiable hoofprints were discovered nearby. In the late 1980s, three young men on a camping trip in the Pine Barrens had gotten up early and gone for a ride on their mountain bikes when they heard what they described as loud, piercing, inhuman screams. When they returned to the camp, their fellow campers said they also heard the screams. That night, some members of their group went into town and after mentioning what had happened, the owner of the bar took them outside and showed them where something with long, powerful claws had ripped metal garbage cans to bits. In the early 1990s, four female college students were camping in the Pine Barrens when they were awakened in the night by high-pitched cries and something stomping about outside their tent. There was a full moon and all four saw a creature walking on two animal legs. Legs that looked like the hind legs of an animal as opposed to the legs of a human. When one of the girls began to scream, the thing spread its wings and flew away, its cries gradually fading into the night. When daylight came, they packed their belongings and started driving. For some reason, instead of contacting the authorities, they drove to Barnegat, where one of them lived, and told the girls' his family what had happened. By that time, it was raining, but the young lady's brother and one of his friends accompanied them to the spot where they had camped. Unfortunately, the rain once again washed away the footprints. Because most people shocked up this particular double sighting to female hysteria, the girls never made an official report but at least one of the young women anonymously revealed their encounter with the Jersey Devil. At approximately 8.15 a.m., Thursday, August 31, 2000, Shayla Fabi, who lived across the road from a heavily wooded area near May's Landing, saw a strange creature peeking out from the trees in a rearview mirror. She described the animal as 7 to 8 feet tall, with a thin, snout-like head. The monster was brownish-gray, with wings folded downward. She said the creature appeared to be curious. In 2009, a woman and her husband had driven out into the Pine Barrens after midnight to shoot a new gun they had purchased. When they headed back to their car, they heard loud, flapping noises overhead and noticed the tops of the trees were swaying, although there was no wind. The wife had left her cell phone in the car, but they couldn't find it. While they were standing at the vehicle with both doors open, something threw the phone at her, smashing it so thoroughly it was totally destroyed. They immediately drove off with the wife at the wheel, then decided to switch drivers, and when they stopped to exchange seats, they heard birds all over the place screeching, as though they were warning each other of impending danger. In the spring of 2011, Nicholas Sakalaskis, his mother and a friend were returning from the Bamboozle Festival in Asbury Park, when a bipedal animal ran across the road in front of them. The headlights, he said, were shining directly on the creature, or whatever it was, but they were able to see only from the leg up to the hip area, and the rest of the thing was completely black. All three were speechless until his friend broke the silence asking, was that the freaking Jersey Devil? As recently as October 2015, there were two sightings of the Jersey Devil, 
with one man actually snapping a photo of the creature. A few days later, a woman submitted a videotape of the demon of the Pine Barrens. However, both the photo and the video appear to have been faked and were dismissed as hoaxes. So, is the Jersey Devil real? Skeptics believe the beast to be nothing more than a creative manifestation of the early English settlers, bogeyman stories created and told by bored Pine Barrens residents as a form of children's entertainment, the byproduct of the historical local disdain for the Leeds family, the misidentification of known animals, and rumors based on negative perceptions of the local rural population of the Pine Barrens, known as Pineys. The frightening reputation of the Pine Barrens may have certainly contributed to the Jersey Devil legend. Historically, the Pine Barrens were considered an hospitable land. Gangs of highwaymen, such as the politically hated loyalist brigands known as the Pine Robbers, were known to attack and rob travelers passing through the Barrens. During the 1700s and 1800s, residents of the isolated Pine Barrens were deemed the dregs of outcasts of society, fugitives, poor farmers, brigands, poachers, Native Americans, runaway slaves, moonshiners, and deserting soldiers. So-called Pineys have sometimes fostered certain frightening stories about themselves and the Pine Barrens to discourage outsiders or intruders from entering the Barrens. Pineys were further demonized and vilified after two eugenic studies during the early 20th century, which depicted Pineys as congenital idiots and criminals, as can be observed in research performed on the Calicac family by Henry H. Goddard, which is currently considered biased or inaccurate and most likely falsified. Jeff Bruner of the Humane Society of New Jersey thinks the Sandhill Crane is the basis of the Jersey Devil stories, adding, there are no photographs, no bones, no hard evidence whatsoever, and worst of all, no explanation of its origins that doesn't require belief in the supernatural. Outdoorsman and author Tom Brown Jr. spent several seasons living in the wilderness of the Pine Barrens. He recounts occasions when terrified hikers mistook him for the Jersey Devil after he covered his whole body with mud to repel mosquitoes. Medical sociologist Robert E. Bartholomew and author Peter Hassel cited the 1909 series of sightings and the subsequent public panic as a classic example of mass hysteria begun by a regional urban legend. One New Jersey group called the Devil Hunters referred to themselves as official researchers of the Jersey Devil and devote time to collecting reports, visiting historic sites, and going on nocturnal hunts in the Pine Barrens in order to find proof that the Jersey Devil does in fact exist. Due in part to their isolated and undeveloped nature, the Pine Barrens have themselves fostered various folk legends. Apart from the Jersey Devil, many other legends are associated with the Pine Barrens. Supernatural creatures and ghosts set to haunt the Pine Forest include the ghost of the pirate Captain Kidd, who supposedly buried treasure in the Pine Barrens and is sometimes allegedly seen in the company of the Jersey Devil. The ghost of the Black Doctor, among others. There are also folk tales concerning the Blue Hole, an unusually clear blue and rounded body of water located in the Pine Barrens often associated with the Jersey Devil. Writing in Jan Harold Brumbin's American Folklore and Encyclopedia, Rogers Professor Angus Crest Gillespie called the Jersey Devil an obscure regional legend for most of its existence and said that after more than 250 years in oral circulation, the legend of the Jersey Devil has many variations. Gillespie cites the devil's image used on t-shirts, postcards, buttons, and cocktails named after the devil as indicators that the recent history of the Jersey Devil is more in the realm of popular culture than folklore. Gordon Stein in Encyclopedia of Hoaxes noted that the alleged footprints of the Jersey Devil during 1909 resembled a horse's hoof. According to Stein, a man later admitted he had faked some of these footprints. Geoff Tibbles in The World's Greatest Hoaxes has claimed that Norman Jeffries was involved in hoaxing the devil. Norman Jeffries, publicist for Philadelphia's Arch Street Museum and a renowned hoaxer, was well aware of the stories about the Jersey Devil. So when the museum proprietor, T.F. Hopkins, admitted that he was in danger of closure unless Jeffries came up with something to boost the tendencies, the publicist decided that a captive Jersey Devil would be the ideal crowd puller. During 1909, Jeffries, with his friend Jacob Hope, an animal trainer, purchased a kangaroo from a circus and attached artificial claws and battle wings onto it with glue. They declared to the public they had captured the devil and it was displayed at the museum. Twenty years later, Jeffries admitted to the hoax. So, 
All in all, some cases of reported Jersey Devil sightings are more elaborate hoaxes than actual sightings, while others are misidentifications and overall hysteria. New Jersey is home to a large amount of white-tailed deer, with a number of around 120 to 180,000 in total, meaning that the many hoops could have been the hoops of deer or even horses. Seeing these news stories pop up every day may lead to some people getting scared and claiming they have seen things that are actually more a product of imagination than actual sightings. Scientifically, the possibility of a creature that would have evolved such traits, even through convergent evolution, seems too far-fetched to reality to actually be considered as an actual creature of scientific interest. Nonetheless, there have been a large number of sightings throughout the years. The folk tales of the Jersey Devil may as well be like those that everyone has been taught at their homes. I do remember when I was younger, they told me such stories and on some nights, overridden by fear and scared, I would report sightings or associate sounds with such creatures which were actually the product of my imagination. Additionally, due to the fact that credible sources have reported sightings, this leaves this mystery as something that will not stop anytime soon. Rather, sightings will continue, more hoaxes will be uncovered, and the truth will eventually be told. As phone cameras will continue improving, we will have greater evidence for either the existence or the non-existence of this legendary beast. It would be even better if we had evidence for the existence of such a creature, as it would completely change science and evolutionary biology to an extent never seen before, same as Bigfoot or other cryptids would. We would have to completely reimagine science, but until then, we remain wary. And with that, thanks to Colgarth for recommending the main article behind this video, and credits to Graveyard Brad for contributing to a large part of the script of this video in an insightful, comprehensive, well-researched, and well-written chronicle of 200 years of the Jersey Devil sightings. My main function in this video was to convert this great article into a digestible, fun video documentary as a program episode of Cryptid Case. This is Ancaridian. Thank you for watching this in-depth analysis of the sightings behind the Jersey Devil throughout the years and an explanation of whether it exists. This certainly took a long time, but I've learned a lot about New Jersey history and the cryptozoology in the process. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.